Now, the South African Human Rights Commission says the judiciary's ability to work independently is critical. The HRC is concerned after senior political leaders call the court's authority into question. It's also raising concern about attacks on the state capture inquiry. Former President Jacob Zuma and Julius Malema are a few of those who have criticized the judiciary. I'm now joined by the Human Rights Commissioner, Chris Nissen. Thanks for your time, Chris. We appreciate it. So you've issued a statement about your concern. Just uh, tell us more about what you can possibly do, though. Well, first of all, good afternoon. Good afternoon to the viewers. Um, we believe that while judges and all of us are just human beings and we're capable of making mistakes and we sometimes we have our own issues, however, the justice system and the justice is sacrosanct in this country. And therefore, we need to respect and maintain and protect the independence of the judiciary. Because if we don't have that, then it's a problem. Also, with regard to the Zondo Commission, we believe that while it's important that, uh, that people do appear and, and do talk about, but that also the integrity of the commission must be protected. As a commission, as a Chapter 9 institution, we want to protect that independence of the judiciary and want to protect the independence and integrity of the Zondo Commission. Obviously, we'll have to engage with the different stakeholders and role players. However, we call upon all those who are participating, all those who have been called, all those that have to appear, and all of those who had issues and being called upon to appear at the Constitutional Court of Elvis, please do respect the judiciary. It's there where you can state your case. It's there where you can talk your talk. It's there where you can argue your, your innocence. But please do not attack and do not disrespect and do not disregard the judiciary and the Zondo Commission. You know, many of the people, Chris, who are criticizing the judiciary might argue that they have a right to do so when they feel there's bias against them. So have you considered actually calling up these people about their concerns? Well, there, there's been a debate within the Commission about how do we go about it. But because it's so political, the Commission doesn't want to get involved in political uh, debate uh, around different parties. However, we're calling upon all parties and all party members, whether they're senior or junior, whoever they are, please respect the judiciary. Because if we start, if we start attacking the judiciary, if we're starting a pro, if we start attacking a process which are put in place in order for us to to deal with the issue of corruption, which has been a major, major uh, 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 driver of the lack of service delivery in this country, that's why we see the prior problems that we have. And the Commission recently held an anti-corruption conference where we saw the effects, just the effects of it, from pit toilets to lack of water to lack of sanitation, lack of housing. And therefore, this Commission is so important, and that's why, as the Commission, we want to protect the integrity of the Zondo Commission. How can you protect the integrity of the Zondo Commission, though, especially if you're not going to personally reach out to people like Jacob Zuma, who's been attacking the Commission? Well, the, 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 the issue is that, you know, this is so highly politicized. And that's why we're saying that at some stage we need to talk to the stakeholders. But for now, we want to say to the public and, and people in general and call upon those who are, who are disrespecting, whoever they are, wherever they find themselves, please do respect the independence of the judiciary. Do respect the integrity of the Zondo Commission. Comply and make sure that you... Uh, both on the basis that we have a democracy that we have to protect and all those men and women who have been part of sacrificing their lives to protect this democracy, to fight for this democracy and also now uh, protecting their democracy. And then lastly, talk to me about your strategic focus over the next five years uh, on the impact corruption has had on human rights. Well, first of all, we, the Commission has put within its mandate a, 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 a duty uh, in reminding government departments, all state departments and all uh, organs of state, whether it's provincial, national and local government, to provide the Commission with um, the, um, whether they have promoted or violated uh, human rights within that, within that particular year. We haven't done it before. We've now decided we really need to do it. We've also established an anti-corruption unit within the Commission in order to deal with it. Because um, 
one of the issues that we see really, which is really hampering, uh, what where corruption has hampered service delivery, is around socioeconomic rights. Our socioeconomic rights have been trampled upon. I mean, we still have pet toilets. We still have people without water. We still have people drinking water with, with the animals. We still have yeah, the roads not finished. We still have bridges not finished. We still see land issue. We still see houses not being built. And we still see the bad treatment of our people, where they at the long queues at their hospitals, the long queues at other government departments, and the fact that Basu Pele has been abandoned. And so we find ourselves in a very dysfunctional society. And that's why, as the Commission in the next few years, we are going to tackle and corruption, we are going to hold government departments accountable. Uh, before, we have not used much of our powers in terms of subpoenaing, brings those to accountability that's supposed to do the implementation of the socioeconomic rights of our people. We cannot, after doing seven years, still have the same old problems. I mean, in some places, there are no water. 27 municipalities do not have water. In some places, the bucket system is still there. In some places, the people are just grossly violating people's rights and so on, the way people are being placed into conditions where they cannot even uh, uh, have a decent life. And so as the commission in the next few years, we are really, really uh, going to go all out. We start off by saying we want to be visible and vocal. I think we not only want to be visible and vocal, we want to hold those who are dealing with the public first in one in accountable in the failure to deliver the socioeconomic rights of our people. All right, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Good luck with that. Human Rights Commissioner Chris Nissen.